Hey you guys, this morning we're going to be drawing traditionally with good old fashioned pencil and paper. So get your ready button to push and let's get started. <laughs> And here's what we're dealing with this morning. So this is Bristol board and we're working with color race pencil. Um, I'm going to be doing portraits as I had mentioned and portraits, faces, cartoon faces, character faces. Those are kind of my go to whenever it comes to doing warm ups, doing, um, you know, stuff like this. Whenever I first get up in the morning, doing the illustration work, doing the leg work, repetition, repetition, repetition. That's kind of a MO that I've been working towards, um, you know, going forward in my illustration career. So if you hear, also, if you guys hear some really strong wind uh, in the distance, man, it is, we're having a, a really huge storm up here in the mountains and I live in a holler. So a holler being the uh, area between uh, a mountain, two mountains. So there where you have the two mountains come down, that area in between, that's a holler, <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, so, you know, we've had some really just incredible winds and, uh, you know, last night was touch and go. I woke up and I had to fix some soffits uh, and some uh, siding here in the farmhouse. So I've already done that this morning. <laughs> um, yeah, so why do I, I've had some people ask me why I use Prismacolor color race pencils. You guys can see that I have a myriad of different tools. I mean, at this drawing desk, I have a huge swath of different types of materials. Drawing materials from graphite to your china markers, um, different types of color race pencils, uh, you know, Faber-Castell, here's color race Faber-Castell. Uh, and this is Prismacolor. These are two different brand names. And, you know, I've got pens and markers. It just depends on my mood and what I'm doing at the time. I love drawing traditionally and having these tools at my disposal is just one of those things that I, you know, that I do. It's just part of who I am. And, you know, I do work digitally. I have an iPad, I've got different computers and, and whatnot, but as a professional, I typically will work digitally, but for my own pleasure and my own warm-ups and stuff like that, I will usually defer to traditional. Because <clears throat> I like feeling the paper, I like, you know, having these tools in my hand, and whenever I'm digital, I, you know, I've got, it's kind of a disconnect. So, if you're just a digital artist and you're just doing digital stuff, I highly encourage you to really, you know, experiment, especially if you've been in front of a screen for a very long time and you haven't worked traditionally. It, it, it really is kind of a coming back to who I am as an artist and what I really enjoy. So what am I doing right now? I'm just literally sketching and having fun. Um, you know, character faces are one of those things that, again, you know, I defer to. I always go back to because the character face can transcend, you know, different types of creatures, different types of people, <clears throat> and you know the methodologies that I use. Uh, really, I, I'm developing as I go. You know, I had posted these right here, this right here on social media, and I didn't do a video specifically because this is my own character. This is Beans um, of Franken Beans. You know, Beans is an alligator. And I wanted to get in and just have some fun with the expression in the bodies, uh, you know, the body expression and, you know, put him in a different uh, character situation, you know, being a man from the South, you know, maybe he's, uh, you know, he's a big landowner and he's, you know, going out for a night on the town. So that's where this particular uh, sheet came from, you know, then I'll do, <coughs> excuse me, then I'll do stuff like this, which I did have a video for. This is a raptor. And, you know, having fun with the character face, having fun with the body expression. Again, this is not so much a human, but this methodology that I use really transcends different types of creatures and people. And, you know, going even further in, you know, then we've got your typical character faces, similar to what I'm doing this morning. And, you know, you know, 
three quarter views, you know, male, female, trying different types of characters, you know, background, always thinking about different types, different uh, directions and stuff like that. And then of course, as I move through, you guys will notice that, yeah, there is kind of a underlying <clears throat> tone to these. It's exploration, and that's what it is in the sketchbook. Exploration. That's where your 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 failures happen, your successes happen, and eventually, maybe I'll come back to these characters, you know, at a later time. I'm not one of those guys that has a traditional sketchbook that's that's you know you turn the page and everything is so neat and tidy. I'm kind of messy. I draw really big, so I've I found that working on this Bristol board really helps me. Um, uh, be able to express things a little bit better and you know I do have stuff like this which is more or less a traditional sketchbook <clears throat> excuse me that as I go through you can see some of these different studies that I do um, you know different materials you know here's pen this is just for imagination um, and characters and different expressions and birds you guys know that I love the birds as I knock down all my pencils off my desk um, and as you see, I mean, I've got pages and pages and pages of just exploration. This is where I got, you know, a little bit, you know, again, here's Beans. <clears throat> I love drawing him because he's got so many different facets. And I get, I really understand and know this character because I've drawn him so much. You know, and then I get into um, uh, crypto, crypto creatures. So, you know, this being the Chupacabra, um, this being the Boogeyman. That being the Leviathan, Wolfman, getting into, you know, I believe I did this for um, Inktober a while back, you know, getting into zombies. And of course, uh, again, getting into that traditional media, being graphite on toned paper and having fun. See, that's one of the things that I need to express to you guys is that's the thing that I'm really having the most is fun. You know, drawing to me, I remember growing up, growing, drawing to me was one of those uh, things that it was very hard. And, you know, I watched, uh, I watched so many different videos, you know, you know, pause, um, you know, artist drawing. And whenever I would go to the theme parks, my mom and dad would always have to urge me on. And even getting older, they would really have to urge me on from getting away from the caricature booth. You know, those booths that you go to when there's caricatures, because I wanted to see how this was done. And that's exactly what this forum and this channel is about. This channel, even though I've reviewed products, this channel, even though I've done, you know, a lot of different types of drawing <clears throat> and exploration, the, the channel is always going to be about creativity and drawing and, and understanding that process therein. So hopefully you guys are getting an understanding of where I'm coming from whenever it comes to these warm-up drawings. You know, I post a lot of these because, <clears throat> you know, I, I think they're really important. So let's go ahead. So as I progress through, you guys saw me start out with a circle, and I and I've said this before, thinking three dimensionally, that height, that width, and that depth being, you know, that distance between you and infinity inside of the context of the page. You know, don't ever think this page is a flat surface. We're thinking this page has depth to it. And as soon as you start doing that, you're not drawing, you're sculpting. And you know, having that mentality really helps me whenever I'm doing stuff like this because I'm not thinking just the flat surface um, and two dimensionality. So you'll see me draw a circle, then you'll see me draw a lattice line that gives it that dimension, that form. <clears throat> and then basically what I'm doing is I'm thinking, okay, what kind of a character is he? Why is he smiling? Who is he, who is he looking at? What is he doing? And then, you know, putting in, you know, lines like this, which would be your eye line. Um, and then, you know, even going so far as to really not dumb down. I hate using that terminology because you, you're, you're, you're dumbing down things to smarten up, but you're not really dumbing down. You're simplifying. So simplification, you know, I, I look at this and I see a, a circle and I already have some expression, but now I really want to get into, you know, this eyebrow comes up. So I'll draw this eyebrow kind of down that variety, you know, thinking about variety. And then this comes in and I've got that other eye coming up and down. Isn't that an oversimplification? You're like, well, how did you do that? 
So I've got this line right here that gives me an understanding of where the eye placement is. Now, in the context of human beings and how they're fleshy, right? They're fleshy. And whenever I kind of go in, I know that there's going to be what's called squash and stretch. Some of you have heard that terminology before. In animation, that squash and stretch, that concept that even though this is a rigid, has a rigid body, um, the flesh can flow and move. So that's, you know, even though I know that, uh, that it is, you know, has a skeletal structure, I am going to squash and stretch things a little bit to help, um, you know, to help tell that story. Because I don't, you know, I want my characters to be dynamic. I don't want them to be uh, boring. What helps me too in this particular stage is to draw in that pupil right here. That helps me a lot. And you notice I'm not really getting in there and pushing hard into the paper. Number one, Bristol board has a very tight tooth. Tight being it accepts material, but it doesn't accept a ton of material. So if I keep pushing in, the uh, material on the uh, writing utensil is going to fill up the tooth of the paper. Tooth is kind of that texture, that feel. The, the texture of the paper is porous. So every time I put a writing utensil in and I'm filling up some of those holes that are in the paper, eventually all those holes will be full and I'll be putting material on top of material and I won't be able to put any material in there anymore. It depends. Um, obviously on the press, the press type, hot press, cold press, what the weight is, uh, but Bristol to me is a nice happy medium that uh, you know I can go in and get some detail, but then whenever I go to actually translate into a finished drawing, I can go in with pen and ink and it's not going to soak through, it's not going to tear up the paper, I can, I can erase, it's very tough, so that's again why I use Bristol board. And you're asking, what are all these lines right here? This particular tablet is made by Strathmore, and it is a comic book page. So this would be your standard comic book page, right? Whether it's vertical, and then I can separate things into columns, or um, uh, you know, horizontal, uh, I can basically uh, make a comic book page, and everything is kind of set up here ahead of time. I don't really utilize any of this because I, I don't use, I don't do comic books, but it's here if you need it. And you can buy these particular tablets at places like Hobby Lobby and Michael's um, and places like that. So, all right. So what I'm doing now is I'm thinking face structure. I'm thinking those those areas that uh, you know have the musculature underneath, and I'm redefining. So you've got all these muscles in the forehead, and now I can go up and I can kind of have that wrinkle again. We're thinking squash and stretch. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and, and shade in. Let's get an eye. Good. A little bit of baggage underneath. Good. Faces to me are really, again, that bread and butter that helps me, like if I'm going to do a character or some type of mythological creature, having the base of drawing hundreds of human faces, you know, if I'm doing anthro anthropomorphic uh, characters, it helps me, you know, put some of those human qualities into the animals that I'm doing. Let's go ahead and do this, and here. Got that cheekbone that comes up. Here's his bottom lip. And again, we're going to go in just a little bit right here because his mouth is closed. And we're going to shade that upper lip. You know, just a little, a little illustrator slash animator's trick that, that helps define that upper lip without going in and really just, you know, rendering it. So when we've got this large area right here, <clears throat> but instead of going in and drawing and making everything really rendered, what I do is I just, I, I go in and I just give a little hint or indication of roundness. 
and then we got this jaw. Since his face is facing us, it's tilted and it's down a little bit. So what's going to happen is this area right here is going to be slightly higher. Because again, you've got that roundness, that underlying structure here. So now that it's coming together a little bit more, I can press a little bit harder. But I'm not going to sit there and render everything. Now I can, but since this is again just a warm up, just a you know, just a teaching tool for you guys. Give a little bit of indication of shadow. Here. There. Eyes are one of those things that we really have a propensity to overdo eyes. I think simple is better. So I'll do this top lid because again that light hits and you're going to get a stronger shadow here. And then instead of drawing all the way across, I'm just going to do the outer corners and that helps give you that sense of depth without having to go in and draw really heavy. Okay. So now we're going to come over to the ears. And since they're not super important, I'm not going to get too mired down in these. So we're going to come back. <clears throat> we got that roundness. I don't know if you can hear the wind. It is horrendous. Okay. And here's his neck. Okay, and coming up to his hair, this part of his head comes around. Okay, we'll go ahead and shade this in. Excellent. There's a shadow here. And here's that final shadow over on that side. And then maybe we'll mirror the shape of his face, comes down, you can have a little bit of a cast shadow on his chest. Okay, shade a little bit into the iris. And he's got these cheekbones, that under, again, that underlying structure comes here. There. Here's that shadow underneath the lip. Okay, and we're going to move on to the next one. <clears throat> and here we are for the next face. So, um,. You know, in human beings, uh, and I'm sure in dog, well, I know in dogs, birds, man, the variety that you get with different species and, and so on and so forth is absolutely phenomenal. And the same is, uh, the, the same is, holds true for people. You know, different cultures, different uh, backgrounds, different places on the planet really, um, you know, you get a myriad of different types of human beings. And for me, as a character artist, as somebody who is, you know, observer of life, and, and you know, you guys should be too, especially if you're, if you've landed on this channel, you guys know that I am observer of life, that, that really, you know, strives to do things um, better and to find different ways to do things uh, better. But always embrace the variety you know in in today's day and age for some stinking reason we're we're you know based upon past um you know histories there's there's a preference for one or the other my my philosophy is about the whole you know race issue is variety is better <laughs> you know being in an enclosed uh, environment being in a place where you don't have exposure to culture really 
kind of, it, it's, it, it doesn't allow you to expand. Whenever we lived in Florida, <clears throat> you know, we were uh, living uh, in Orlando, and of course Orlando is a, a kind of a hodgepodge of culture, and you have just a myriad of different types of people, and I just love, I loved it. I loved the amount of culture that we were exposed to. I loved, you know, from the Latino and Hispanic culture to the African American culture to the Puerto Rican culture to, um, uh, you know, a lot of the Im immigrants that have moved there that really uh, uh, have expanded out. And I just love the different body types and the different people and the way they look. You know, America is a, is a land of, of immigration and immigrants, and it, it really saddens me to see whenever uh, a sect of people or a loud voice is screaming otherwise. You know, America is about culture. It's about, <clears throat> it's about diversification. It's about uh, education. It's about all those things. And, you know, whenever you prefer one culture over the other, you're just, you're really, uh, you're really handicapping yourself in a way that that is kind of sad um, you know I, I think back there was a comment made there's a movie that was made years and years ago it had Holly Berry in it it had Warren Beatty in it and one of the comments made was you know give yourself another 200 years and we're all just going to be intermingled with each other to the point where you won't have certain species that'll come out you know it'll be an intermingling of all the species not species the the cultures and and all of that and 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 i think there's some truth to that but also um i just gosh you know i i just like i like different cultures i like experiencing the, the ways they do things you know the 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 different body types the you know the chin designs the 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 forehead the big foreheads the small foreheads the wide heads that's what i'm trying to get to basically is i just like the variety in, in human beings and you can really look at that and 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 also look at different dogs and and uh <clears throat> you know just animals in general um so what am i doing i'm focusing on males right now i'm gonna get to females in here just a second but uh in terms of how I go about thinking about these particular types of, of processes I'm building, you know, I, I sit here and I'll, I'll tour around with the eyes. Is it going to be big eyes, small eyes? Is this person going to be an ex-boxer? Are they going to be, um, you know, where did they live? And a lot of times those things will dictate the character design as I mess up my eye placement by talking to you. <laughs> that happens sometimes I go, yeah, I'm just going to talk the whole time. And then suddenly I look down and my eyes are completely wrong and uh, in the wrong place. Um, you know, talking about culture and all that other stuff. Um, yeah, I think we're close. <clears throat> so, yeah, starting out and having an idea of exactly what, you know, I'm trying to accomplish in the character is always key. But, uh, in this context and what I'm doing, you know, explaining to you guys how I go about doing warm-ups and stuff like that, sometimes having fun is, you know, one of those things that you just have to allow to happen. You know? There we go. Having fun! What happened to that? You know, what happened to, to all of that and experimentation and failure? And I made a video a long time ago. It seems like a long time ago. Believe it or not, I've been making videos since 2014. Gosh, 2014. The year I stepped away from my job that I had been working at for a long time at the studio uh, there in Orlando. And I went to work for um, myself and being a freelance contractor for Disney and, and, and you know, doing all that but what I'm, I'm trying to get at here is that video in that video I talked about <clears throat> failing faster and you're like fail I don't want to fail I want to be better I want to get better at what I do and yeah you will but as soon as you fail and and get a lot of those bad habits out of you get a lot of the um, things that really inhibit you from being a good creator as, 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 as you progress through this thing we call art and your journey, you, the more you fail, the more you realize how to do something right. You know, you fail, no, you know, just like riding a bike. I, I rode a bike, and learned, and fell how many times before I realized how to do it right. The same thing goes true with drawing. 
you know, the thing is drawing is a skill. And with skills, just like any skill, it takes that learning curve. It takes that time to be better. It takes time. And in this world and day and age, I think that, you know, <clears throat> getting better and understanding and, and realizing that you're not good at something extremely quickly is, is lost, you know. Uh, you know, getting into something and realizing it's going to take some time, it's going to take some effort, it's going to take some sacrifice on your part to get better. Um, it's just one of those things that, that can't be faked. You know, you have to put in the time, you have to put in the effort. That's, gosh, it's, it's one of the things that I, you know, whenever I was teaching at the college, I saw over and over again, the kids wouldn't put in the time and then they would hand in something that was so subpar and they expect to be graded in such a way that it's positive. Now, I, I grade on certain things and of course I'm gonna grade on a curve because at the end of the day, if you were to really grade them based upon the effort that they put forth, most of the kids that I had, had, uh, had taught would fail. And ultimately, you know, I was told in the beginning by the by the uh, department head, he said most of these kids in here have never had a drawing class, so you have to take that into account. And I thought, you know, of course this is not a art college, even though this is a art department. Um, you have to kind of grade on that curve, and um, a lot of them just wouldn't put forth the effort, and it would just make me so sad. I would say angry <clears throat> because. You know, the opportunities that you have in college are not going to be the opportunities that you have in the real world. And I tried to express to them that putting forth the effort now would really save them from a lot of heartache. And, you know, you had the opportunity to fail without a huge consequence in college. Um, whereas in the real world, if, you know, you, you fail, then suddenly um, you don't have a job anymore. Or, you know, you're, you're left without, you have to go and do something that's unpleasant. So with that in mind, I definitely tried to encourage as much as I could to do things um, that would benefit, you know, have that return of time, uh, you know, that time quotient and the return and, you know, work in your sketchbook. And I would repeatedly get sketchbooks that had maybe two doodles in them. And I thought, man, if you just spent 15, 20 minutes a day, you would improve. And especially, you know, you would ask the question, are you serious about this? And I would ask this question a lot. Are you serious about art? Yeah, this is what I want to do for my career. And then you would have these people that were in these classes that would spend hours and hours playing games or they would go and, and spend hours and hours at a, at a sports event that would not benefit them um, in the long run. And <laughs> nothing against sports, trust me. I, I enjoy sports for what they are. Um, you know, opportunities uh, for those people and people that really enjoy sports, they like the competitiveness. But being a distraction, especially whenever you're trying to develop this aspect, it's it was just so sad to see it happen over and over again. You know? Okay, so what am I doing? Okay, so that's good. <laughs> I'm good with that. Now, you saw me go in and place in some of these lines, like this line right here, and you're like, well, why did you do that? I did that because I'm thinking of lighting, I'm thinking of form, shape, I'm sculpting. So I'm thinking highlight right here, mid-tone value here, shadow here, so my darkest values will be in here. Again, I, I've drawn a nose enough to understand the shape of a nose, so whenever you see me do something really quickly, a lot of that has to do with the things that I've invested in my tool belt, my artistic tool belt. Those things being the hours and hours upon study, looking at human faces a lot, drawing human faces and understanding the structure therein. You know, understanding there's a bone right here and underneath, and I'm gonna just go into the anatomy a little bit <clears throat> right here. So it comes around and you have this opening inside. So you have this bone right here, here's that bridge of the nose. And then imagine if this whole flesh unit right here made a cartilage flesh unit, that's an interesting, that could be an interesting band name unit um, but inside you have these openings right and then you have the bone underneath that comes here and here's your nasal cavities so I know that and you're thinking well you know it because you draw on a lot and you you know blah 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 no I've known it because I took the time to learn it 
<laughs> that's, you know, take the time. Take the time. If you're serious about doing this, take the time to learn. You know, knowing there's a cheekbone right here, and, and this comes around, here's the top, and your teeth come around, and here's the top of the, uh, <clears throat> of the skull and you know the skull comes here and here's the other side of the cheekbone and this opening and here's your jaw that splits and you have a bone that comes in right here and I'm not saying you have to know explicitly all the the anatomy of the human body but get the basis get the foundation I recently heard a talk about foundation and how important it is and I'm constantly going back to foundation because I need to reconfirm and reestablish those principles, those basic principles of foundation, light, principle, and all those things, eye placement, all of those things whenever I'm drawing because if I don't and I, and I go off and I start doing things without visual reference, if I do things without experiencing them, um, I, I will not be able to to do things efficiently and and do things accurately <clears throat> okay so women so females are a little bit different than guys guys you saw hard lines and i can do hard lines for females as well but a lot of times the female form i'm gonna move my phone out of the way here the female form especially if you're gonna do uh something that you deem quote unquote uh, attractive. Now, attractive is subjective, just like art is. You know, one person might think um, uh, a female form, a certain female form is beautiful, where another one is going to look at that and say that's hideous. You know, especially throughout time, we see this over and over again. You know, if you go to a museum and you see and look at art and you think, man, there are a lot of there are a lot of very large, thick women uh, back then because that seems to be the only thing that you know they were illustrating. Well, you know, back in the uh, early times, medieval times, um, artists weren't allowed to to use females as models, so that's why you'll see a lot of muscular um, female forms because they use males and they stuck female heads on them. Um, you know, female heads don't, especially younger female faces, don't have a lot of wrinkles. Their features are a little more delicate. So in doing female forms, just remember there is, there's not really quote unquote a formula for success, <clears throat> but if you're, if you're, you know, in the mindset, I'm going to do a young female, she's going to be quote unquote attractive. So she's not going to have, uh, uh, you know, certain shapes that, you know, human beings would deem uh, unattractive, you know, not a bulbous nose that's going to reach out and, and smack you in the face a couple times. You're going to have dainty features, maybe the rounded cheeks are going to be, you know, a little bit rounder and it's, you know, to make her younger. So what I'm basically trying to say is there's different female types that you can focus on. And depending on what your character type is, if she's going to be sultry or sexy, if she's going to be young, if she's going to, you know, how old is she going to be? <clears throat> what are going to be those, those visual cues to help you, you know, to help you design your character? You know, I'm doing a young female. She's probably 18, 19, 20, 21. She's going to be semi-attractive. She's not going to be too sexy or sultry because I'm not really, that's not really, you know, that's not my bag. She's going to have a little uh, fun expression, maybe a quaint smile. Um, <clears throat> and then as far as making her attractive, you know, that Disney, uh, whenever you think of cartoons, you think of Disney. And, you know, they have those huge anime looking eyes and they do that so they can emote, emote being to show emotion. And, you know, you can do that. You can do whatever you want. You're the artist. Um, but uh, in this context, what I'm trying to do is just show you my process. So <clears throat> go ahead and do this. Get that hair coming around, kind of covering up her face a little bit. I like to draw through a lot. So like right now, I need to have the very top of the head right here. Just give a little indication. Again, I'm going to do it again. And I don't need to sit here and do exact. This isn't, you know, that's not what I'm doing right here today. I'm just drawing again those shapes. You know, we talked about how hair can, can be really flowy um, or it can be, you know, like it's painted on the head. So what I'm doing right now 
is I'm just trying to get an understanding of the flame of the not the flames of the flames of the proportion and also the planes. So you see that I've kind of I've drawn the head in, and I've drawn the, the chin, I've drawn the neck. So we're getting in now into those details that really will define the character. So I'm thinking, okay, so here's the middle of the head. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to think, okay, placement. Since I've drawn heads a lot, I know where certain things are, and I know how I can use those things, especially if I draw them in first, like certain anchors. So that nose is an anchor. That center line bridge of the nose, which is going to swoop up, and then you have the eyebrow that kind of connects. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to move it over slightly right here. So now I'm going to go ahead, and since this is the center line, I like drawing this outer eye first because, again, it helps me anchor things. So in relationship to where the nose is, I'm going to draw from the edge out. Okay, and again, just giving an indication of where stuff is. Really slight as I talk to you, I end up messing things up. So then I'm going to draw here. And how that eyebrow comes in is going to give you a really good indication of where that corner of the eye is. Since we're not completely turned three-quarter, we're kind of a frontal three-quarter. So we're going to see a little bit more of this inner part of the eye. And this comes up and swoops. And then we're going to have the top of the eyelid comes down. Okay. And I like nice big eyes. Okay, so now that I have that anchor point right there, I can go ahead and I'm not going to draw in like huge baggage or anything like that because I want her to be cute, I want her to be younger, so I'm, again, putting in some of those elements that are the visual cues, maybe a little eye shine right here. Okay, so then I come around and I've got this method for really helping me place where the other eye is. So anchor points. So typically the corner of the eye or the corner of the nose is where that other eye is going to start, right? <clears throat> so this one's actually over a little bit too far because I got that corner of the nose right here, right here. So we're gonna go ahead and have that come down. Okay, so now I'm gonna, I'm gonna breach over. Here's the other corner of the eye and I can go and draw that in. Now there is a misnomer that, that eyes are difficult. Um, if you're coming at it from somebody like a layman and you don't know anything about eyes, then yes, they're gonna be challenging. But eyes and they're really, uh, how do I put it? They're circles. So you think eye, you think, first of all, most of us do this, right? Yeah, this is an eye. But if you think in terms of there's a circular sphere and then you have the eyelid that actually wraps around then you see that the eye has a lot more going on than what you think. And then you have this lid that comes up, and then this bone. Here's the eye. <clears throat> and then you have this fat pocket that reaches around. Here's the inner part, the lid, and then you have eyelashes, depending on if they have makeup or not, since I'm doing a female. And then you have the pupil, and then you have the iris. So this right here is a very oversimplified eye. This is a more complex eye, so you have to kind of find the happy medium between those two, and especially whenever I'm doing stylized work like this is. I have to think, what is... See, it's funny. I put that over this, and then now that I've come back, I see there's an imbalance. So I want to go ahead and, and have that hair come out, have it come around. So now I've got that other eye that comes up, like this, that lid comes around. down and these again you know it's just part of the process you know I, I talk about process 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 understanding who you are as an artist 
is something that will take a lot of time and some people never really understand what their you know what their purpose is as, as as a creator you know especially if you're doing things for other people you're constantly changing things up and expressing things in a way that benefits them you know, you as an artist, you as an individual, really need to find your own thing. That's why it's important that you're constantly doing your own projects, your own characters, because it will help you gain your process and spur on your imagination. Because if you're constantly doing things for other people, then you're constantly changing and you're, and you're doing something called compromising. Compromising your view for their view. <clears throat> and, and you know, there's nothing, I'll be honest with you, there's nothing wrong with that whenever it comes to making a living. But whenever you're doing stuff for yourself, there's always that point where you say, man, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing today. But if you completely um, get rid of that persona of yourself, then you'll realize uh, you've, you've lost your mojo, you've lost your creativity, you've lost your spark and inspiration while you originally got into drawing, and that sucks. I can't tell you how many times... Let's go and do this. Have that lip come up right here. Like how many times I spoke to Disney artists, especially those in consumer products, have that. And, and two, the center part of the eye typically comes down. It's right there. The center part of the eye comes down, and that's going to hit right there. Disney artists, whenever I worked over at Disney, they were con... I mean, I asked one guy... Actually, he asked me, he said, do you draw whenever you're, you know not working and I said man I'm constantly drawing I said I love to draw I said it's part of who I am I said I'll go home you know after a full day's work and I'll draw and he was surprised and I thought how how can you not do that even recently I saw a posting um, by a guy that you know I've known for a little while he uh, he does uh, a lot of uh, comic looking stuff, comic book looking stuff. And, you know, and one of his, um, fans asked him, is he, they're like, do you draw, you know, outside of work? And he's like, you know, I put in eight, nine hours a day and <clears throat> I'm drawing stuff and, and, you know, doing that whole thing. And whenever I get off, I was like, I just, I just close the door and I'm, I'm done. And I'm like, I can't do that. I, I just, I don't, I, I can't. I, I love I love doing this. This is you know I've talked about stress drawing before. I've talked about you know getting in the studio um, you know if I'm really stressed out and uh, you know drawing things and making making pictures and, and expressing even if it's something really small and slight <clears throat> you know I want to make sure that I'm constantly um, you know being a little bit better, doing things a little bit different. You know, and I encourage you, I encourage you, even if, you know, even if you have an art job, you know, definitely find, find your way to do stuff on your own and have, have fun. Bring back a little bit of that joy. I'm going to give her a little bit of a beauty mark right there. I like beauty marks. I think it adds to the presence of the piece. Definitely get that other nose right here. She's cute. Okay, let's draw a little bit of darker right here. All right, let's have this come here. Okay, hair. Hair's one of those things that really, gosh, I, I don't know how to tell you, it really frustrates people because they want to draw all the strands and you're not, you're not supposed to do that. You know, you can, and eventually if you, you know, your piece evolves and, and you definitely can do every single strand and you know that that would be a really highly detailed illustration but me I like drawing hair and shapes especially the start you know for stuff like this it really helps me so that's basically what you're seeing is me drawing the hair and shapes you know shapes rhythm and flow how things fall on the head how gravity is affecting the uh, the overall uh, shape so Again, you know, I, I get right here to the spot right here, and I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to have the hair cover this, but I still need to know where that head goes, comes around, right? So I don't think I've put enough hair on the back of her head. She kind of looks like she's got a flat head. Um, 
So let's do this. Good. Okay, so let's go ahead and darken in this pupil a little bit. You're seeing this in real time, and I wanted to show you this in real time. And you know, I th I really appreciate you guys clicking on this video because you know YouTube really um, has been uh, kind of poo-pooing longer videos, and it goes in the algorithm. And a lot of people they they don't like watching videos like this because it takes a long time, you know. And they they all the time lapse of videos that are on YouTube. They don't educate you. They they show you a process and and they don't explain the why. And I'm really big on and on letting you guys understand the why things are done. This pupil is too big. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase that just a little bit. So let's do this. See, sometimes what I call taking a moment is really beneficial even when I'm trying to teach you guys something. Sometimes you look at a drawing and you think, why is it not working? A lot of times it's just a little change, it's a little nuance, right? So let's do this. Have that, come around. And her left ear is going to be covered, but I want to know where it is, right? So let's go ahead and have this. This is a shape. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and have this come up. It has been snowing outside for about two hours. For those of you who who uh, are my regulars, um, you know that I live in the mountains. You know, I, I know where I live. I live in the very tip-top part of Georgia and right you know, in the Appalachian Mountains. So I live on a farm, so that's really cool. Um, and we get some very interesting weather, not unlike Seattle. Um, there's so much rain that happens here. I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded how much rain happens here. Um, also, we get some pretty decent snows. Um, and the, the, the weather, uh, the humidity stays low, you know, probably 75%, 80%. 60% uh, somewhere around there so very mild weather but occasionally we get some serious storms and this is one of them we're experiencing that big storm that happened um, you know North Carolina and I think they called it Izzy why are you gonna name a storm <laughs> I lived in Florida for years and years and you know we were constantly naming storms and I'm like I don't want to name a storm that'll give it cr you know validity and credential just name it you know go away or something like that not a huge fan of storms. You know, back in Florida, we had thunderstorms every day. You know, you had a, a, a tornado warning, or not warning, watch every day, and you know, it wasn't a big deal. You get a tornado watch or warning around here, you better keep your eye and your ear out to make sure that you don't have like devastation coming your way. So we can give it a little curl right here. And we're gonna go ahead and shade this in a little bit. Let's go ahead and shade this in a little bit. With this Bristol board, like I said, pushing the pigment in a lot of times the paper, and sometimes it's a challenge to get more pigment in. You know, I'm okay with that, especially if I'm going to go ahead and do a. Um, let's go ahead and move this over a little bit. Do a conversion to like ink, but uh, since I'm just doing this today, we're not going to really push that in there too bad. Okay, so one more, one more, one more. <clears throat> if I can get one more. If I don't mess it up. <laughs> Isn't that funny? You're like, just do it, dude. If I don't mess everything up and cause it to be terrible looking. Okay. Have that eye line right here. Even in this stage, I am thinking hair. Um, believe it or not, you know that because a lot of times, especially with with uh, you know female portraits, you can utilize the hair as a framing element. So that's what kind of I did right here. I used the the hair to kind of frame in her face and direct that eye line up. Um, but yeah, hair's fun. 
So again, doing hair as a shape um, is something that you know I highly recommend. Don't think about individual strands. Do it as a shape. So I basically started out with my circle, moved on to the bottom part with the jaw, even having you know the neck come down slightly here and understand where that where that particular uh, element is. You can see in, in less than you know 30 seconds, uh, I've kind of mapped in and, and done my roadmap for the portrait. And that's, you know, that's something that, you know, can happen for you. I highly encourage you to quote unquote, find your way, you know? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this eye line. I'm gonna come around. I'm gonna find where the top of the ear is because if you look, the corner of the eye is almost in line. It's just underneath the top of the ear. So a lot of times you'll see me just rough in that particular shape and relationship. I talked about that earlier, the relationship between the eye, other elements on the face. So that's why you can draw in three quarter, front view, side view, top view, bottom view, if you have that relationship understanding of where stuff goes. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna put in Here's the top of the nose. Okay. Here, now we're gonna go ahead and draw the eye line up. Is that cheek? It goes down to her jaw. <clears throat> okay, again positioning stuff. Here's that center eye line comes down so you can already see this is going to be wrong. I'm trying to get some of those anchor points in so I won't have such a hard time whenever I go start to put in some of the other anchor points. So I want this to come up and I want that eyebrow to come around. Okay. So you can see already there's an expression forming. Even at this early stage that body mannerism, you know, that tilted head, the, the, uh, the eyebrow raised, there's a sense of uh, mischievous, mischievousness. Is that even a word? Mischievousness? Okay. Coming around, we're gonna go ahead and put the chin in just slightly. <coughs> not drawing hard, not really getting in there and just pushing super hard. So let's go ahead, and draw that high. Okay, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take this, this part of the cheek and I'll find the top part of the eyebrow. And then what you could do is you can take this line from the upper part of the forehead. This comes around and that'll kind of dictate where the start of the outside of the eye is, especially in this three quarter view. And this comes in. You can see it. it isn't a formula, but it's a methodology and a knowledge that happens when of course you draw uh, a lot like I do. Okay, this comes up, and here's that inner part of the nose. It goes up to the eyebrow. Okay, it wraps around. There's a big, uh, not big, there's, there we go. So that comes up, and then I'm gonna have the other eyebrow come up. I've seen a lot of fem females. It's like eyebrow science. There's a science behind cool looking eyebrows, especially now. You know, there's you know, girls, if you look at girls, that those perfect eyebrows, I've seen perfect eyebrows. And I'm like, I wish I had perfect eyebrows. I've got very thin, wispy eyebrows. My lineage is, is uh, Dutch Scandinavian. So think of, uh, if you ever look at uh, like a Viking or a depiction of a Viking or somebody that is of Norse uh, lineage, then you'll see, you know, very light eyebrows or wispy eyebrows. And that's kind of where I am. I'm like, I just want some eyebrows, dude. My, my kids make fun of me like, Daddy, you don't have any eyebrows. I'm like, be quiet, they're right there. What are you talking about? They're right there. Just give them me a magnifying glass. <laughs> And that's one of the reasons why I wear dark rimmed glasses, again, to help me with my eyebrow problem. Okay, so again, I've got this eye 
here's the start of the other eye. So I'm going to come up. And then I'm going to come around. And it very easily, whenever you have that relationship, so here's the start, and I'm keeping in mind this side needs to be just a little bit higher, so I'm going to have that eyelid <clears throat> kind of come here, and then it's going to come around like this. Because remember, we've got a big eyeball in there, right? You've got an eyeball you have to deal with. So let's go ahead and have this come up, because her eyes are kind of pooched up a little bit, like this. Good. Then we're going to have the lovely eye makeup here. We're going to have that come up. Good. And now I'm just putting in some simple plain, I call them plain lines, to help me identify where that plane is. Because that plane wraps around, then you got this eyeball, and then you got this cheek that comes around here like that. You'll see me put little simple lines that you think are adding to the composition and the character design, but they're actually little cheats that I put in there to help me because, you know, I still need help. You know, things don't happen for me automatically. You know, even though I've got a lot of uh, time under my belt, it just it doesn't work that way. So let's go ahead and have this pupil. And I'm going to have the iris right there. So again, let's go ahead and have this nice dark line here because we've got makeup. Because if you look, you know, this is more stylized. So it's going to be, let's go ahead and have this other, you can see more of this pupil. Let's go ahead and have the iris. Let's go ahead and have that in. And give a little bit of indication of value in there to help define that form. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and fix this nose. It comes down so it's out a little bit further. Okay. So let's go ahead. Here's that muscle. Can have her smiling slightly. There's different types of lips, so just understand that, you know, let's go into the down. It could go all the way over here, but we're not going to have that. We're going to do this. A lot of times, if you do the corners of the mouth, that really defines and helps shape the mouth much more than you were if you were to put this, you know, something like this right here, this little. Whoosh. So just make the corners of the mouth a little bit darker, and that should set you up. And then we're going to bang. Nice bulbous bottom lip. I'm going to show you here. Remember this line right here? I'm using that as a guide. So now we're going to draw just a little indication of that bottom lip. A lot of people ask me why I don't draw more females. It's just not my bag. I'm not very good at it. Um, you know, I, I I don't want to say I'm not very good at it. I just haven't spent as much time, and I'm more of a creature guy. <laughs> I recently got a job, though, doing tons of females. So I'm like, oh, crap. You know, I did, whenever I was at Disney, I did a lot of Tinkerbell. So I have a lot of experience whenever it comes to understanding what that type of female is. You know, your mythical creatures, your fairies, and stuff like that. So, you know... I do have that, and also understanding what cute is, especially in a female form. Um, there's there's a difference between cute, and then there's cute, sexy, and then there's raunchy, and then there's just raunch. I'm not I'm not a raunch guy. I never have been. I never will be. It's just not who I am. Um, I, you know, first I think it really demeans. <laughs> there's a difference between respecting the human female form, and then making it obscene. You know, with, you know, large, um, how do I put it? Just large things. You don't want stuff popping out of things. And gosh, it's, it can get really ridiculous. And especially, you know, I've seen incredible pictures drawn of females. And one of the, one of the, you can tell that they spent hours and hours on specific assets of that female. 
and I'm just like, dude, or or whoever you are, if you're a female or whatever, you you know, that's your preference. Art is art. That's why it's subjective. So you focus on that, and I'll you do you, and I'll do me. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now we're gonna come back. I'm gonna draw this ear in slightly. Okay, right here is pulled up. So let's go ahead and give an indication that the hair is pulled up. Let's go ahead and make these a little bit darker. And give her some cuteness. Keep going back to this because I think this is the head tilts down. You're going to see that distance relationship here. It's going to be changed because you got a little bit of foreshortening in her hair on her hair in her face. So let's go ahead and have that shadow right here. Excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and draw this in. Good, good, good. Again, we're doing this a little bit. So now we're gonna go ahead and have this come around. Here. Maybe she's got a ponytail or something. I don't know, this comes up. Nice, dark. So a lot of times, um, you know, whenever you see uh, a drawing, you'll see the lower part of a line uh, grouping. Like it'll be nice and thin here, and then it'll get darker here. Again, that's to help accentuate the form and help not put everything on the same plane. Okay, so we'll have this again. I'm gonna have that shape. See, we got these shapes, these hair shapes. I'm framing the face. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this. And that's kind of where I wanted to get with this today. I didn't anticipate on doing anything super heavy. Maybe she's got an earring. See? Even that little earring helps define who she is as a character, you know? You know, this channel's been around for a while. Um, I was thinking about adding another channel, uh, you know, obviously because I'm trying to um, get some type of a uh, base going. And the people that are here, I so appreciate you guys. You kept the channel going all these years, <clears throat> even whenever I dropped out <laughs> for a while. You know, just know that, you know, I have great aspirations for the channel and, and I appreciate you guys and everything that you do. You know, like right now, if, if you've been watching me draw for a little while and you're like, yeah, this is a fun channel. I like listening to the stories. I like listening to the human element. I like watching the drawing. I'm watching it evolve and getting some information and learning as I go. Definitely hit that subscribe uh, button. You know, the like happens. What happens if it, if it goes past a certain number of likes, then suddenly it goes out to all of my almost 13,000 subscribers that I have a new video. So, broke my pencil. <laughs> so definitely hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you guys once again for a wonderful, wonderful morning of drawing. And we'll see you on the next one, okay? Thank you guys, bye.